Thank you very much, Arnold, and it's a pleasure to be here at, at Berkeley today. Um, I'm affiliated with the Women's Studies Research Center at uh, Brandeis University, and also uh, at Brandeis we are launching um, the Women and Music Project, WAMP, which is a project, an umbe umbrella project that is going to cover all our activities that will be going on at the Women's Studies Research Center, and Suzanne Hanser is a, a member of that. So. Um, so stay tuned as we have a lot going on. Um, it's, it's my pleasure to tell you today about Rebecca Clark and um, her, one of her best known pieces, the Piano Trio. Her best known piece is the one that's referred to in this slide, um, the Viola Sonata of 1919, which she wrote for a competition for um, Elizabeth Sprague Coolidge. And here's another picture of her. Um, as a violist. I mean, she's best known to viola players and because of this viola sonata. Um, but then the piano trio that we're going to hear tonight was written just two years after the viola sonata, so in um, 1921. But, um, and she did make her living as a professional violist most of her life. So um, I'm just going to basically give you an overview of her life and something about the shape of her career. And there's a, a handout that's a timeline that just gives a little overview of her life and um, compositional activity. Um, so this is, um, she was the oldest of four children and she was born near London, um, north of London in Harrow. And um, this is her with her brother Hans Clark who actually became a very famous um, biochemist and also he, an amateur clarinetist. The family was full of amateur music making. And uh, there was a lot of photography of these early days because her father was interested in photography and actually worked professionally for um, George Eastman. And he would, um, ba from his base near London, he would travel on the continent and keep George Eastman posted about the um, activities and developments in photography. So that's Rebecca with her sister, um, nine years younger than Rebecca, uh, Dora. And Dora was an artist. Um, we'll see a few drawings by her. So um, we'll see, this is a family, from a family portrait. We're gonna see the whole family of, um, but this is around 1901. The family was actually uh, a rather unhappy one. The mother was uh, German, the father um, was American, and they made this base in Harrow, north of London. And um, so there's um, three of the children, and the father and the mother there in the background. Of uh, Rebecca, there's an unpublished memoir that she wrote about her childhood, which she calls um, I Had a Father Too, and um, she was, um, talks a lot about the, the beatings that they received, and she was the oldest, so she got punished more. Um, and then uh, that the father wanted chamber music on tap, as he said, so all the children were um, taught, learned instruments, and um, and had this sort of home music making activity going on, you know, you know, both good and bad. There's stories about like the children being dragged out in their pajamas to play for, you know, um, grown up parties late at night and things like that. So. Her, both her brothers settled in the United States around the time of World War I, I think in part possibly to avoid being in, fighting in World War I, and then also to escape the father, to leave the, the family home. And this is a drawing that may or may not be by uh, Rebecca's own sister, but it does show, I think, the, you know, some of Rebecca's spirit. There she is with uh, Vogue magazine and showing her, her uh, lacy knickers <laughs> in 1917. So. And she had studied at the Royal College of Music in London, and this is a picture of her um, at the Royal, uh, the formal portrait that they took at the Royal College of Music in London. And she studied with Charles Stanford, who was best known as the teacher of uh, Ralph Vaughan Williams and Gustav Holst, and very renowned teacher there. And she was always so proud that he took her as uh, his student. And that's another portrait from the same time. And then um, her father threw out her, her, she never actually graduated from the Royal College she, because uh, her father took her out and she had to start earning her, or threw her out of the house and she had to start earning her living as a professional musician. And so this is um, when she played with the Queens Hall Orchestra in 1913 and that was a very pioneering role to be one of these um, first musicians. Um, 
when orchestras were still um, almost entirely men. The harp player sometimes might be a woman. And so she had a lot of these pioneering roles, even though she was often very modest about that. And this is her friend, the cellist, Mae Mukley, who was really a world-class cellist and one of the real pioneers for making the cello an acceptable woman, a chapter, uh, an acceptable instrument for women to play and to solo on. And she actually premiered a lot of pieces by, um, by composers like Vaughn Williams. And this is, uh, and, and they traveled a lot, May Mukley and, and Rebecca Clark. They traveled in the US starting in 1916. They traveled to Hawaii, um, which was pretty adventurous for women to be doing that at that time. And in 1923, they went on a trip around, all the way around the world um, to Indonesia, China, India. Um, and this is a drawing that uh, Rebecca's sister, Dora, did of, um, of May Mukley. And it's a, a plan for a sculpture and the sculpture doesn't survive, but there's a photo of the sculpture. And the sculpture was um, given to um, Elizabeth Sprague Coolidge from a concert that Rebecca and May Mukley played together in New York City in 1918. And, um, and I just want, there's the, the detail. I don't know if you can see it. There's the name here, Anthony Trent. Anthony Trent is a pseudonym that Rebecca Clark used. And she did only use it one time for this piece, Morpheus, for viola and piano. But she spoke in a later interview, interviews that were done with her when she was almost 90 years old, about how, um, about how she just felt so self-conscious about having her name on the program more than one time. Like she has several other pieces on this program and she wanted to have one more, so she invented this name of Anthony Trent. And there's this interview where she says, oh, you know, people would ask me about Anthony Trent and I would blush and people would say, oh, there's a romance there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and this is a pic picture of her with Elizabeth Sprague Coolidge. So that, she always described her um, involvement in the Coolidge competitions as the real high point of her composing career. 1919, the viola sonata, um, runner up t tied with Bloch's suite for viola and Mrs. Coolidge herself breaking the tie and giving Bloch the prize. In 1921, it was much the same situation of uh, Clark's piece also being a runner up, not first place, but getting a lot of publicity. Um, the Viola Sonata was performed at the Coolidge, at the Coolidge Festival. This is Elizabeth Sprague Coolidge's um, uh, Festival of Chamber Music in the Berkshires that she started. The first one was 1918. <laughs> And the next one was, um, they had these competitions then every other year for a, a new piece. With Mrs. Coolidge, then in 1923, Mrs. Coolidge commissioned a piece from Clark because I think she felt sorry that she had been runner up twice. And so she commissioned actually a very important piece um, for cello and piano. And that's a rhapsody, a big piece that is still unpublished. A lot of the music is still held in the estate. And this is just one of them doing, uh, that's Rebecca on the right. You know, they did a lot of traveling by, you know, by ocean liner, by train, by um, exotic ways. <laughs>